So today I'm going to go through Rainbow Bridge. So what is Rainbow Bridge? Uh, it's one of the largest natural stone bridges in the world, located uh, outside of Lake Powell by Navajo Mountain. Now there's several different ways you can get there. You can take a boat, you can hike overland from the north. This video is going to show you the trail from the south from Rainbow Lodge. It's about 25, 26 miles round trip. It's an in and out hike. There's also about 5,500 feet of elevation gain and loss throughout the entire trip. So first thing to know, Rainbow Bridge is on Navajo Nation land. You need a permit to hike this and to backpack there. Now I'll put links that show you uh, phone numbers to call, the website where you can go to look for the permit. But um, time for a little side talk about Navajo Nation permits. So, need a permit from the Navajo Nation? Well, you can check out their website. Their website may offer permits online, it may not. For the most part, they typically want you to pick up the permits from the appropriate chapter in person. Now, I say appropriate chapter because it depends on which hike you're gonna do. Rainbow Bridge, that would be the Cameron chapter. If you wanna do Monument Valley, that's a different chapter, I believe. I haven't done that one before. Anyway. Picking them up in person, that can be challenging. Depends on when you're gonna be there. We leave after work a lot for our hikes, and that means we get there way after five o'clock. So they give hours for their office. Um, they're, they're more of a guideline than a rule when it comes to office hours. Uh, if you think you're gonna squeak in there at 4.55 on a Friday and get your permit, because they close at five, according to the website, you missed them by about two and a half hours. They're gone for the week, they're done. They keep their own hours. But don't let this discourage you. Here's the trick to getting permits from the Navajo Nation. Plan ahead. Call a couple of weeks in advance and you can mail them the money and they can mail you the permit in return. Just leave that time. Don't wait till the last second like I always seem to do and you'll be fine. Plan ahead. So anyway, once you got your permits, then you have to get there. What you wanna do is take I-98 West. Uh, it's just south of Page, Arizona go about 51 miles and then you'll want to turn north onto Route 16 and I'll follow that for about 25 miles it'll bear to the right there's a dirt road to your left as you can see here take that dirt road take your immediate right now I'm not gonna expect you to memorize all of this I'll put the, the driving information into the description so you, you can get a route to get there at this point, you're now on gravel roads. They're fine for passenger vehicles up to about the last mile or two. And at that point, you do need a, a four-wheel drive vehicle because it's a lot more off-road than it is on-road. So once you get in this location, there's a few roads that should show up in your GPS that look like they're gonna get you to the Rainbow Lodge. What we found when we got up there is there's private property. We found one that was blocked and it said it was flooded. We had another one that ended up being somebody's driveway. So we went and did a bunch of trial and error and finally found the route that you see here that got us to the trailhead. But just give a little bit of extra time because I can't guarantee that the route that worked for us is gonna work for you. It, it looks like it changes a lot in there and the directions we got from the betas that we read were, were different than where we ended up going. So no, it gets a little confusing, but ultimately have it marked on your GPS and if you keep trying, eventually you'll get to the lodge itself. So once you've parked, get your gear and start hiking. Now, this is not the most traveled or populated hike by any stretch of the imagination. However, it's very well maintained, very well marked. It's difficult to get lost. So the trail itself starts out simple enough. You're up high, looking down onto the Lake Powell area. Uh, walking along the bottom of Navajo Mountain. After about two-thirds of a mile, uh, the first canyon you come to is called First Canyon. It's typical canyon skirting. You have to go down into the canyon, but up far enough that it gets shallow enough you can get down into it and out of it safely. Climb back up the other side, keep skirting around at a fairly constant elevation after that around the edge of the mountain. After about one and a half miles, you come to Horse Canyon. It's a lot more drastic than Furch Canyon. It's got a really sheer drop off at the beginning of it. A lot more elevation loss and gain, but it's, it's really pretty at least. Now by this point, we were, I don't know how far we were. We were like four miles where our goal at this point was Yabbit Pass. It looked really close. 
We'd gotten through the main canyons, we're like, we're past the major obstacles, get up the Ebbett Pass, drop down, simple. This is where the trail really gets relentless and brutal and punishing. It is all of these ups and down and up and down and up and down. And I, I swear, it looked like a half mile on my GPS and it seemed to take forever and we just weren't moving. It was the slowest distance that I've ever had to walk in my entire life. Eventually, you'll get that four and a half miles and you'll be at Yavit Pass. I kind of feel like this is a good time to give a little lesson learned that we had during this hike. Our initial itinerary was we were gonna go in, bring water, leave it at Yabbit Pass at that campsite, keep hiking down, night one, stay at First Water, night two, stay at Echo Camp, and then hike from Echo Camp back to either First Water or Yabbit Pass, and then spend the night for night three, and then the morning of day four, hike out. Now the goal of this was I wanted Milky Way pictures with Rainbow Bridge, Milky Way in the background. It was going to be awesome. It was going to be epic. I couldn't wait. That was one of my main goals out of this hike was to get that photo. In order to do that, I had to camp at Echo Camp. What happened is by the time we got to the top of Yabbit Pass, we were beat up. It was a lot tougher hike than we thought. It was our first hike of the year. We had gone through the holidays and, you know, hadn't been hiking for several weeks and it was beating us up. And we sat at Yabbit Pass and we thought, are we gonna be able to get out of here? This is rough, this is tougher than we expected. Now, if you ever heard the saying, don't stick with a bad decision just because you took a lot of time making it, this was a great example of that. I had it in my mind, I was getting those night photos, single-minded, didn't matter that the conditions had changed through the hike. I wanted to do that. So we plowed forward, we got to first water and camp, and we were just dead. After a lot of deliberation, we decided day two, we just day hiked to Rainbow Bridge, back to our original camp, and then day three, all we had was a short hike. We cut off 16 or so miles of hiking with heavy backpacks for a day hike with just really light backpacks. Had a lot more energy. Day three, we had the option to stay at Yabbit Pass with the water we'd stashed or just keep going to the car, which is what we ended up doing and getting out a day early. And I, I guess that's just the lesson I wanna convey here, is don't be so rigid in your planning and your itinerary that if you get out there and the weather changes or uh, the hike's harder than you anticipated or you get lost or it's taking longer or you know, you're just not feeling it and you're struggling, don't motor forward with plan A be flexible and adjust so that you're safe and you do what's smartest for you given the actual circumstances you experience in the field. If you do make it and you get some night photos, uh, Rainbow Bridge, I'd love to have them though. I'm still kind of mad about that, but you know, I'm alive, so there's that. So anyway, once you get the Abbott Pass, uh, you have about a 2,000 foot drop over the next two miles down in Cliff Canyon. Scenery is awesome at this point. Uh, you're just really glad that you don't have to go up anymore, but going down, it's really hard on the knees. There's a lot of baby head switchbacks. It's not easy by any stretch of the imagination, but at least you're not going up. You get close to the bottom and there are some more campsites. Probably mentioned at this point, no water yet. There's no water on the trail whatsoever. So when you finally reach the bottom of the descent down into Cliff Canyon from Yavit Pass, you're about six and a half, seven miles in. You have one more mile to go, and that's where you're gonna hit first water. So this is where we made our camp for the night. There's campsites. Uh, I saw two or three, there weren't, or there weren't a bunch, but up on the banks, just look around. There's fire rings, water's right there. Firewood's kind of hard to find. It's a canyon that doesn't have a whole lot of, of trees and branches to burn, so uh, you gotta look around, but we found enough for both nights. Spend the night there if you want. It's a great spot to stay. You have other options that I've gone over at this point or you can just keep on going. That's up to you. So from this point, you've got about another mile to go before you want to look for Redbud Pass. Now, Redbud Pass is easy to miss if you don't know this. So eventually, after about a mile, the canyon opens up and uh, it's pretty wide at this point. You want to look for this rock formation on your left. It's a pretty predominant feature. You can't miss it. At that point, look to your right. There'll be another one of these little funky signs that says Redbud Pass, and just go to the right. There you go. So then Redbud Pass tightens up, slots up a little bit. It gets very narrow, and 
What you may or may not know about Redbud Pass is it, it's a man-made passage that basically it's a shortcut. It's two canyons going this way, Redbud goes through the middle, they blow up the center of it, and connect it as a shortcut. When I say they cleared the canyon, um, they missed a spot. But you eventually come to this obstacle that was poorly described in the other trail guides that I read. It's a couple hundred feet, I would say, uh, very steep climbing up this loose dirt gravel hill that plugs where they supposedly cleared these two canyons apart. And you get to the top and then you immediately have to go right back down on the other side. The other side is a lot more rocky and covered with boulders. Uh, that's where you would want to hand your packs down. You'll probably want mm, 20, 25 feet of rope to lower these packs down. If you're expecting it to be a nice flat trail, go prepared. It's not, oh, there's one spot yet. Hand your backpacks down. It's, it's a little bit more than that. So eventually Redbud's going to open up a little bit. It will join another canyon that will come in from your right. You're finally in the canyon that has Rainbow Bridge in it. Bear to your left and keep following the trail. Again, very easy to see. The scenery at this point is your classic Utah hiking. Tall red walls, the black stains down on the overhangs where the water's washed out in the turns and bends in the river. It's really scenic, really pretty. You're along the, the creek the whole time. You'll go up on the bank and be high above it and then down and you'll be close to it. And it's just a really beautiful and scenic part of the hike. So finally, after about 12 miles, you will come up to the famous Echo Camp. That is the most popular of all the campsites. It's in a beautiful and humongous alcove. It's right next to a water source. It used to be the spot to stay and camp for the night, obviously back when the lodge was uh, operational. And it's still popular to this day. So if that's your destination, here's your spot. Drop your pack, set up your camp. So once you're ready to move on from Echo Camp, uh, you have about a half mile, very well marked trail just like the rest. A little bit of elevation change but not much to it. Uh, easy going, very scenic, and then boom, you round the corner and there it is, Rainbow Bridge. Hang out, take your pictures, take your video, have lunch, have a good time, check the place out. It's humongous, it's amazing to see in person. And uh, when you're done, turn around and come back the way you came. So that's Rainbow Bridge. Hope you've enjoyed and hopefully this has been informative and helped you out. Uh, if I think of anything else, I'll put it down in the description. I'll make sure I put some GPS coordinates, trails, that sort of information that uh, you can't really take from the video that well. Have any questions, let me know. If this sounds like your kind of hike, there's not many of these where you can go out and have the trail to yourself. Have this amazing uh, national monument at the end of it. You can check out, spend the night, have it all to your own. And uh, those places are few and far between. So this is a fun one. It's challenging, but it's worth it. Hope you enjoy.